Well, based on the fact that I've got it stripped down to the PCB, I suspect you can guess it. I'm going to go ahead and try swapping in these little switching regulators, and we'll see what we get. Looking at the mechanical design, this heat sink is, of course, bolted to the board in two places. Uh, there's also a mechanical support provided by both the regulators, the 7805 and the 7812. There's a tip. What is it? 210. You know, there's a tip transistor over here that we're going to leave in place. We don't need to touch it. Uh, but we are going to remove these two voltage regulators, and we're going to look at swapping in a couple of these switchers. I've heated up the soldering tool. I'm not sure how well it's going to work because they're solder. These are soldered in well on both the top and bottom of the board as they should be. I, I prefer to do that with voltage regulators or, or anything that deals with higher currents. Is to solder to both the top and bottom of the board just to get as low a resistance uh, connection as I can. So these may not unsolder well. Ow! That hurt. It spit a little bit of hot solder back out. The, di the diaphragm in this is starting to fail and I really need to replace it. I gotta go look for spares. Uh, I got a lot of hours use on this. A lot of hours. So let's see what we get here. Actually, the input and output look to have desoldered well. Will the ground connection, the middle one here, because of the amount of copper, that actually desoldered perfectly. I'm very happy with that. So, same thing here. Looks like it desoldered perfectly as well. Turn the desoldering tool off. See if I can get a screwdriver in here and into that screw, and I did. We can just take the, uh, maybe take the nut and spin it off. There it goes. And the screw. <clears throat> Capture both the nut and the screw. Do the same thing for this side. Now what I don't know here is the switching regulators, of course, are going to add switching noise into the circuit. So they're going to add a little bit of noise into the circuit, although there, there, there's capacitance and decoupling and other stuff downstream. I don't think it's going to affect the operation. Of, of the drives, but one never knows. So again, that's something we'll have to look at. So there's one regulator loose. See if I can get the other one to rock. There's the other one loose. So those desoldered very well. Very well, and just fell out. I'm happy with that. We're going to get a bit of alcohol. We're going to clean the old dead. Sink compound out of the inside of here, hopefully. I don't think I have any Q tips left laying in here. Yeah, I do. There's a few Q tips hiding over here. Just because I can get rid of it, so why wouldn't I? And the heat sink compound is effectively removed. So just a notice that this tip, tip 110, I think it is, this transistor is on a mica washer. So I the tab must be isolated from the heat sink because the heat sink become ground. I'll prove that here in a minute, but you want to be careful around that. You don't want to short the metal tab on that transistor to the heat sink here accidentally, that would be a mess. I'm sure it would electrically cause 
problems, and destroy things, and I don't like the fact that this is now kind of floating freely. It, it's pretty stiff. I don't think it's going to be a problem. But the drive shouldn't be banged around a whole ton, you know. Let's get to ohms. I'm in diode mode. Continuity. So, touching the screw, I see continuity to the shield, but if I touch the metal tab, uh, on the transistor itself, I don't see continuity. And so what this tells me is there is a insulator ring that the screw goes through that isolates the screw from the tab. A little insulator that, that, that actually goes down into the hole in the tab and it and insulates it. And then the mylar back here, uh, it's not mylar, is it? It's actually a... I don't remember what it's made of at the moment, but it's not mylar. And you have this little insulation tab here. Uh, is insulating that tab also from the metal here. And that way, there's just no connection. Uh, and there doesn't need to be, so, in this case. So, if you do this, be wary of that. If you tear everything off, be sure you put this back together correctly. Uh, make sure that you don't actually short the tab to here. You will have problems if you do that. So now I've got to dig up regulators and decide a little bit how I'm going to deal with this. Well, if I can get the bag open and get one out. So this is really overkill. He does sell one amp versions of these. Uh, but I ended up ordering three amp. This is just going to sit in here. Just drop it right in. Uh, it does sit out away from the PCB. It certainly looks like to me I could put a piece of double-sided foam tape behind that to hold it in place. And that would actually bring back some rigidity to the heat sink as well. The width there is about right for some foam tape. Q7, let me look again. Q7 is the 7805, which would be over here. I need one of the blue ones here, which is the plus 12. I guess another approach to this could be to use a boost converter over here to boost that 11.5 up to 12. If such a thing is available, I don't know. If a boost can have that small a delta between the, the input and the output. So that's the same way. So let's drop both of these in place. We happen to have some double sided tape right here. Just part of why it's kept there. So uh, I'm just going to go for it here. It's got a little bit of solder or something stuck on it. Dug on it. Yeah, it's a little solder ball that does not need to be there. I guess I can literally just take one of these. And stick it on there and just trim around it. I'm simply doing this for mechanical support. There's no reason to do this. This won't add any kind of heat sink ability or anything. Uh, it's just more to me to make a nice installation. Mechanically, things are held together. So, you know, vibration. That's the head step and the motor spins. Want to eventually break solder joints or cause one of these to bend over in some weird way. So, I know I've said it about three times here, but I'm going to look again. Q7 is the 7805, and it is. And that's the green one. And all I'm going to do is drop this through the holes 
at as much of an angle as I can and then when it's straight I will fold it back onto the heat sink and the same thing goes for this one maybe stuck to my finger fold it back straight solder up the pins uh, with a solder I've got an appropriate tip for this on there cleaned up well bit of a mess here as best I can I think at this point I'm actually better off to put it into the case so I can connect I think I'm better off to put it into the case and connect the floppy drive so I actually have some load on it this won't take too long to just quickly do here in a test mode board goes in what am I hitting on? Oh, I'm not quite lined up, there it is there's a little alignment tab here that has to go in Little rubber supports back on here. I need to look at maybe finding replacements. These have gotten really hard over the decades, which is okay. The head goes in. So it's on correctly. Where's the uh, oh, there it is. Drive sits in place like that. That cable harbor doesn't go like that, it needs to come. Oh, come on. Goes on there. This has got J11. Goes there, and then J12. Next to it. And then this guy, which is... 180 degrees spun around in the middle and then 10 why does that seem wrong? J14 J10 it's actually marked on my silk screen I was going to say, something is really off here. We're off by a pin, and we actually are off by a pin. 
So let me get this one pulled back out. I've discovered wider pliers work better for this than the really narrow ones I used before. This guy is off by a pin, this one right here. Let me get the lift up out of there. It goes there. And this guy goes next to it. And J10 next to that. And then J14. So J11, 12, 10, and 14. He's on backwards. He's on correct. The heads, is the cable all the way down and seated? I believe so. That looks kind of funky to me. No, it's actually not seated all the way down. Why isn't it? It originally wasn't seated all the way down. I've had issues with these pins breaking inside of these and creating huge messes. They're really hard to replace, especially on fine wires like this connector here, which is for the heads. It is as far down on as it will go. You're in place correctly. This way I'm also up off of the the work surface down below, which is I wanted to be. I could have tested this out of the case, but it would have been more difficult to do. See, we determined this screw is actually grounded, so I can connect there for a ground. Uh, let's see if I can find the test points. So if I can find test point 13 and 14, There's test point 13 and 15. So 13 is plus 5, and 15 is ground. And if I can find 14, it'll be the plus 12. Should have looked for these before. There it is. Okay. So I've got test point 13, I've got plus 5 here, and I've got plus 12 over here. So hopefully, I'm not going to have smoke and fire come belching out of this thing. Hopefully the power is off. Let me look at the power is on. I want power off. I need the AC incoming. If I can get a hold of it here. We'll clip on, and I'm just going to so we saw the drive operate, which says the electronics have come to life. 13 should have been plus 5. So, what have I got wrong here? Is that not actually ground? What we determined it was. We know that is DC volts. Point fourteen. Oh, it's n it's floating because there's nothing to connect it to ground at the moment. That's why we're not able to measure anything. I do need to get on the ground test point down here. So. The heat sink was originally grounded because the original voltage regulators I had in there, just look at one, the center pin on the regulator is ground, so this is voltage in, 
ground and regulated voltage out on the side. That was ground and it was soldered to the PC board on a ground and this metal tab happens to be connected to this center pin. And the metal tab was screwed onto the heat sink and so that was pulling, ground was being connected through the soldered in lead to the tab through the bolt to the heat sink. Without either one of these in, this heat sink is no longer grounded. I don't think that's going to be a problem. But it does make things kind of interesting. I'm debating whether I need to actually ground it or not. But we should measure plus 5 now. Or plus 12. And we do. And it's spot on. So this is where this is going to get interesting, is, is watch how long that's taken to decay down. That's taken a long time to decay off. And this is going to be one of the downsides of what I've done here. Is it, For a big chunk of the time that was decaying off, the drive was still active. It didn't just shut down immediately. Uh, let me get on the plus 5 here. We'll bring on the power. Why am I again not measuring plus 5 on that test point? Test point 13 plus 5. Plus 5. So I shall be sitting right there. It's, we've got a ground issue here to give us what it looks like. We're going to pick up a good ground on here. Test point 13 should be a ground. I should find the plus 12 volt regulated here. I'm just going to go ahead and power up and carefully probe around. I should find plus 12 there. Am I only finding 6.9? Oh, I know why. Maybe I know why. That's the 12 volt regulator. And that's the 5. And why am I so bloody confused here? Test point 14. here. Oh, that's not actually ground. Test point 15 is the ground. Okay, I had the ground lead on the wrong place. So this should come up to 12 volts now with power on. And it does. I need to rotate this so I can actually see into this other regulator. We'll bring the power back on again. And if I can get to right there, I should find plus 5. And 5.1, so it's a, you know it's well within spec. That is what I'm expecting to see. So why aren't I finding plus 5 on that test point? So I'm finding the plus 12. Test point 13 plus 5. Test point 13. It's certainly soldered into the circuit. There should be plus 13 or plus 5 there, and there is. Oh, the post has. I see the issue. The post has plastic or something all over it post isn't clean, so I can't make electrical contact to it. Oh, the things that just get in the way here. Oh, this may be the post that had the hot snot on it. When we first took this apart, I mentioned that one of the posts had hot snot all over it. That hasn't completely removed it. That may have. 
And so I'm clipping into the hot snot. I'm not actually making contact with the metal of the test point. <sighs> Isn't it fun how things can just get more and more confusing? But again, this is why we do this live and demo it on camera, is everybody runs into these kind of weird issues where you're looking at a test point and going, but I can see you're connected. Let me try to get that clipped on there. Again, it's dark down there and I can't see. There it is. That post should now measure plus five. And by golly, it does. Okay. So one of the things that this mod is going to create is this. Let me power it off and power it up. It actually did do a full reset. Uh, are we getting good regulation? So one of the things I saw on the forum where he described these is they want the voltage to roll off enough so the 5 volts drops off immediately. And that makes sense. But what we saw was that plus 12 took forever to roll off. And that's because with the drive not running, you can, so I'm on the plus 12 here. Well, we power it back up. And we've got good 12 volt regulation. And when I click the power off, power's off. It's taken a long time to bleed down. And that's because there's 23 volts coming in. And it's that 23 volt collapses. So we'll go back and do this again. So power's off. That 23 is now collapsing and collapsing and collapsing and collapsing. Finally got down to where regulation ended and then it rolls off and, you know, regulation goes away. The way he described this is if you apply power too soon as that voltage is rolling off, the regular will say, hey, wait, I'm not going to power up and run in this condition because my input, uh, it doesn't like that condition necessarily and won't start regulating correctly. It'll just say shut off. Uh, I'm not necessarily seeing that behavior here. So the next thing to do here is just let this thing sit. Uh, let me get the leads out. And I'm just going to let it sit here for a while, uh, as we did before. Of course, there's no heat being really transferred to the metal case here, because we use double-sided tape here. There's no heat on that regulator at all. It's not being taxed, you know, it, it, I'm sure it's not even pulling a full amp. Uh, so, and it's good to 3 amp, so it's not being taxed off. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while. We'll come back in a bit and check temperatures. And you know, I may have been doing some of this off camera if I have apologies. Uh, we'll come back and check in a minute, you know, in 15 or 20 minutes. So the drive's actually been on for a couple hours here, just sitting here idle. So, of course, the heat sink should be at room temp, and it is. A little bit of heat. It's a little tiny bit warm. So this is the 12-volt regulator back here. I feel no heat at all. And the 5-volt, it's slightly warm. We should be, well, let's go ahead and just with it sitting here like this, check the power supply rails. So as I remember... 15 was ground. So that test point right there. And 13 is plus 5. That same pin with the hot snot on that 5.09. And this test point right here should be plus 12. 12.08. That's just, it's beautiful. That's just exactly what we'd expect to see. So, really, the last step in this will be for me to go down, uh, get the drive installed on the computer, and give it a test. Uh, and I'll be back in a second with those results. Okay, this little program has been running for I don't know a half hour, maybe longer. You can see at the top of the screen it got through pass 93. You can see what it does is just open up an output file on drive 1, uh, writes a line to it 256 times, closes it, and loops around again. And like I say, it's been exercising the drive for probably a half hour. The motor's been constantly on the head step as it writes and opens the file and closes the file. So uh, the next step here is to you know open up the drive, and we'll take a look inside and see how warm it got. 
So I had the top half of the case on the drive the entire time it ran. And I'm going to reach inside and feel. So the heat sink, it's a tiny bit warm. I'm trying to figure out where that heat is coming from. Maybe it's coming from this transistor over here. No. I can definitely feel heat rising up out. Is it coming off the diodes down in here? Again, no. They're not particularly warm. I mean, I can touch them. How about the diode bridge here? Again, a tad bit warm. So why can I feel a bit of heat over here? It must be it must be coming off this transistor down in here, that tip 110, I think it is. Uh, but no, I mean, the drive sitting idle. Before we did the conversion here, I believe the 7805 was on this side, but don't quote me on that. Just sitting idle, it got really warm because that, you know, being a linear regular versus a switching. So this drive is operated absolutely fine. I ran the same exercise loop on it last night. Uh, for much longer, uh, but I didn't have the screws out of the case, so I couldn't really test temperature, which is why we ran it this morning to record this. So I'm happy with this. I think this was a very worthwhile little mod. It's keeping a lot of heat out of the case. Uh, the uh, drive motor is actually a tad bit warm. It's not hot. It's a little bit above ambient. There's nothing here that seems hot. I mean, even. What I felt on the heat sink was just a tiny bit above ambient. Anyhow, as I started to say, I think we'll call this a successful mod for the floppy drive. And I'm going to look at doing the same thing in the uh, Atari 800 uh, sometime soon.